Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. Some of you might remember a long, long time ago I had a space plane design called the Shinkansen. And the premise of the Shinkansen was that we would have two planes that were identical, well at least their body was identical, but one would be filled up with fuel and the other would have fuel plus cargo, plus a cockpit. And the one that was filled up with fuel would help boost the one that was a full space plane with the cockpit and the cargo, and then the one with the cockpit and cargo would continue on into space. And the problem with the Shinkansen was that, in the end, it didn't have any cargo capacity at all. And it was a methane-oxygen space plane, and that was kind of close. Now, there had previously, in the 50s and 60s, been a triple plane design, the triple plane design is hydrogen and oxygen, and that works a little bit better. But if you have a double plane design, you can't use hydrogen and oxygen. There just isn't enough volume in the planes for the hydrogen to work out. So you have to use methane if you want to use two. But I thought about whether it'd be beneficial to scale up the system in order to get some better cargo capacity. Uh, we had used it in my To Mars and Beyond series, I think, um, one of the Mars series in order to bring stuff up and bring people up to higher orbits and so it worked out in the course of a series for that but Pekka uh, who watches my live streams decided to make a scaled up Shinkansen for a Mars mission and uh, put it to use and I decided that I would try to make a scaled up version of the Shinkansen as well to see if we can get some better cargo capacity from it. However, in the course of doing that, I realized that I already had a methane-oxygen space plane that was ready to go, and I really didn't need to make a new one, and that was the Orion carrier plane, which is huge, uh, as you can see here, and also has souped-up engines compared to the Orion's, uh, compared to the Shinkansen space plane. The Shinkansen space plane basically had methane-oxygen versions of the Merlin engines, and these are basically splitting the difference between the Raptor engines and the BE-4s. So they're not quite as wonderful as the Raptor engines, but they're a little bit better than the BE-4s in terms of specific impulse. And they have about the same thrust, or are splitting the difference in thrust. And so they're supposed to be easier to do um, closed cycle engines. So they're stage combustion engines. And yeah, we're going to see if this works out for us. Now, the carrier plane side, that's this side, has a lot more fuel in and is actually lighter because it doesn't need to be as strong as the space plane one. The space plane one has to have a little bit of extra heat shielding and also needs to be strengthened along the cargo bay. It does have a cargo bay and we do have cargo here. We're prospectively putting 60 tons in here, which is optimistic. However, considering that the Ryan carrier plane its normal way of going about things is to boost a payload on its back and the payload on its back uh, with the right upper stage has been like 40 tons. Now we don't recover that uh, second stage unless we have lower mass. So in order to recover the second stage we would have to have maybe 35 tons instead. So in order for this to be beneficial we really need to be able to carry more than 40 tons, right? But there are drawbacks. We're carrying a huge amount of dry mass compared to just having a small second stage, right? Also, we're not using hydrogen and oxygen. So there's a lot going on here as far as what we need to test. Another thing is the Ryan carrier plane by design is supposed to land on uh, airfield downrange. And specifically, launching out of Tampico is supposed to land at the Bahamas. Will it be going fast enough to do that? I doubt it. So we're going to have to see what to do about that. But anyway, we've got the 60 tons in. We've got a pair of planes that are exactly the same. They have been tested before, though only on suborbital trajectories. We've never brought one into orbit before. And let's see how it goes. So the space plane side only has seven engines. The carrier plane has nine. But they're identical engines. There's no vacuum optimization on the space plane one for now. So one of the tricks I played with the Shinkansen space plane was that the vacuum engines on the space plane side had an extendable nozzle and so it would be able to light at sea level but then extend its nozzle so that it could operate more efficiently in vacuum. Uh, with these stage combustion engines we might not even need to do that judging from the Raptor engine. We might just be able to light the vacuum ones, though that might not be efficient. 
We'll have to see. Maybe an extendable nozzle will be a good idea here too. For now, they're all the same engine. No vacuum optimization. SAS on, throttle up, ignition, and launch. Not exactly a huge thrust weight ratio. Very Shinkansen like in that respect. A little bit of drift. It's not perfectly, perfectly balanced right now. So, thinking about going to the Bahamas for the landing, we'll just aim for that. And we'll go like that. Okay. So, we need to keep an eye on the carrier plane. Now, the carrier plane is feeding both its engines and the space plane's engines right now. It's being cross fed. And then, when it leaves, it'll just be the space plane's engines. Uh, feeding from the space plane tank. So this tank isn't being used. These tanks aren't being used. Yeah, it's, uh, the carrier plane is not going to get very far. Bending off some of the engines on the carrier plane for a bit. Okay, well, off goes the carrier plane. I would have to sort of flip around. I guess having it fly back would be the easiest thing, right? Oh, our runway just disappeared, but yeah, and maybe we should have them the other way around with the carrier plane on top so it can fly back. Well, uh, looking at it, it's got to be tough for this to get to orbit, but we'll see how short we are. We don't really have any extra volume in here. Uh, we've got in the fueled area or fueled volume, we're up to 92% utilization. There is a non-fueled volume, there's still a cockpit area here available, and then there's the cargo bay area. We could possibly sneak some methane and oxygen in the nose, but maybe that would just be for RCS. But yeah, this uh, two-plane system is a tough one. Then again, the three-plane system is rough as well, in a way. Well, since the carrier plane isn't going to make it to the Bahamas no matter what. We could probably at least go to 90 degrees initially. Of course, there is an alternate option, and as I said, this carries a heavier payload in its bay with an engine, and once it gets to space, opens up the bay, pops out the payload, and it lands at the Bahamas. This runway here. It would only have to be going 4,000 meters per second there, but uh, I, I, I don't think that's the best idea. So far, opening cargo bays has taken quite a lot of time in real life. Okay, we've exhausted what we could. We do have some residuals. Um, though, apparently, when it's cross-feeding, the carrier plane does not seem to have any residuals. It's coupled like that. But we're shy about 400 meters per second here, which is a lot. Um, also a lot is the 199 tons we seem to have left. Oh, right, it's the payload, sorry. Okay, the payload is making 199 tons, so it would be 139 tons or 140 tons. That makes more sense. Um, still really heavy, twice, uh, almost twice the dry mass of the space shuttle. So nothing to sneeze at. We've got the leftovers of the decoupler there, but that's not our present problem here. Let's go back to the Space Center. This is not going to uh, make it to orbit here. I had edited the electric charge, by the way. We don't have enough there, but I didn't want to put it all together again for that. We can just slap on some batteries in the cargo bay if we need to, but yeah. Uh, so, maybe we'll land this, but it's clear that this is not going to be carrying the payload it currently has. So, this says 7,000, let's call it 7,400. And... Maybe I should just add the other two engines on. I mean, right now, that's not looking great. So... Let's try at least 40 tons, but... That's not much of a benefit. So that's a 40 ton tank. That's not much of a benefit over the prior situation where it's just using a uh, stage on its back. And yeah, uh, let me just get some more engines on here. I guess we'll, yeah, we've got OMS engines as well, but we're not to the point where we're going to be using those. 
And of course that increases the dry mass of it, but maybe getting off the ground a little bit faster will help. We burn a lot of fuel with the carrier plane just getting to Mach 1. So yeah, I think we'll flip it over and eventually see if the carrier plane can make a landing. Possibly fitting with jet engines would be nice, but then that'll cut into the payload capacity again. Okay, well, let's see. Okay, SAS on, throttle up, ignition, and launch. They're very quick igniting engines. Honestly though, the high mounted wing isn't ideal for a space plane. For the carrier plane it made sense because of the placement of the Orion 3 space plane's wing. And also because it's sort of a heavy lift vehicle and the way it comes down, this is not a bad arrangement, but um, for heat shielding purposes coming down from orbit, the high wing isn't super. And also, uh, we can't strengthen the wing by having sort of beams going across from wing to wing when the cargo bay is there, if it's a high wing. We can do that if it's a low wing, though. Okay, well, separating the carrier plane. At least it didn't bump into us. And we'll see if we can get to orbit this time. I mean, still, the Shinkansen system might have had maybe a four ton capacity and that's when we slapped some extra boosters on. So any capacity would be an improvement. Uh, I was hoping for a little bit more considering the size of this on the pad. This is about the same mass as SLS on the pad. Well, turn some engines off here. Okay, we are in orbit with 334 meters per second left. Could mean that we can carry a little bit more, maybe 42 tons, but probably we'll need a chunk to also deorbit and come down safely, and that periapsis is a little bit low. So that is what we've got here. Let me see if I can bring the carrier plane back. I think I'm interested to see that. So can the carrier plane be a return to launch site booster? SAS on. Um, let me actually activate its RCS. Uh, well, at least uh, enable it here. Okay, throttle up and ignition. And launch. One positive aspect to the Orion carrier plane in this configuration is that the bodies do sort of blend together very well as opposed to Shinkansen with its curved surface isn't quite as good a fit, though this would be an even better fit with lower mounted wings. So I'll have to consider that. The bay size is a little bit tighter than I would like it to be too. Having the payload on the top of the space plane helps, right? You can make it somewhat larger than the actual body of the space plane even though that looks awkward. Okay, off we go. And this time with this. Okay, well, this is not oriented right control from here. Alright. And RCS on. And I'm just gonna try and fly it. This is at speeds where. Um, oh, but it has no methane and oxygen left, though. Well, the RCS is useless. We should probably reserve some. Um, we just have the aerodynamic control surfaces, which, well, they barely work up here. The question is whether I can turn at all. And the answer right now is no. Uh, it's getting a bit far. Okay, can we pull up here? Uh oh, uh oh, uh, uh oh, okay, oh no. Uh Oh great. Um Yaw control got lost. I probably shouldn't have tried anything. Well, that's not gonna make it back. Hmm. 
Well, I mean, we could reserve some fuel in, but then we cut into our capabilities. I'll I'll try once again, and I'll try not to mess with it. But we'll have um, additional locked RCS, high pressure aluminum lithium tanks with some methane and oxygen locked. I mean that'll hurt our capabilities as well, but probably not too much. It's not like we're bringing this to orbit. I mean, yeah. So we'll just have it like that, maybe a little bit out, and I'll reduce the utilization. But really, we shouldn't have to, but um, something like that. Okay, just so we can use the RCS. All right, here we go again. SCS on, throttle is up, ignition, and launch. Okay, separation. And control from here. May we'll use surface velocity plus here first. Take atmospheric autopilot off for now. Mach 4 right now. A lot of wobbliness. Uh, uh, oh, I tried to switch to atmospheric all pilot, but that didn't work. I was doing pretty well on Smart ASS, but atmospheric all pilot uh, couldn't control the yaw there. But I think we're too far away to try and get back without jet engines. We're over here right now. Just on our momentum, we don't have that kind of speed. We'll lose it too quickly. This doesn't have huge wings after all. So yeah, I don't think that would work quite well for us. And the benefits of this system are lackluster compared to what I was hoping for. So yeah, this attempt to enlarge the Shinkansen system uh, is dubious at this point. We'll have to see. Uh, I'm thinking maybe, maybe I'll have to come up with something different. Or we could have the vacuum optimized nozzles or slightly more vacuum optimized, no optimized nozzles on the space plane side and maybe that'll help, I'm not sure. I mean it'll help a little bit but I'm not sure by how much. So yep, that is the situation. The test is not as satisfactory as I would have liked. But there's our result. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.